there is a boy whose father left his occupation of farming from a village called Kataba in the region of Sabat Sanjal. That's my story. I'm Momodu Sabali, uh, the son of uh, the late Landing Sabali and uh, Aja, the late Ayakadi Jame. And migrated to Banjul in search of greener pastures. He settled in the city and got hired as a dock worker at the Banjul port. His wife was to join him later and after renting in Banjul on many streets like James, Senegal, they settled at 84 Old Perseverance Street and had a son named Mudu. The boy grew up in the streets of Banjul. I did my early childhood in Banjul, uh, going to Dara Pablai at uh, Primate Street, uh, doing the usual hunting gesse. I think the most prominent groups at the time were Rainbow and Fanti. And later came Black December. Playing games and doing the customary Halal Belugan and had fun around the street kin called Pimpin. We relocated to Lamin, Combo North, which is uh, currently in the uh, constituency we call Busumbara constituency. He enjoyed the childhood in Banjul, spiced up, but his fun was to be cut short when his foster father decided they should relocate to the village of Lamin, Combo North. In Lamin, he attended nursery, primary and high schools under very tough conditions, including going to school with an empty belly, sometimes and using melted candles mixed with cooking oil for his body lotion. His mother, who used to sell porridge in Banjul, now shifted to selling vegetables and other condiments at the market at Lamin. We relocated in Lamin in 1981, where I went to nursery school, uh, an old abandoned church in Lamin Sanchaba, and uh, later proceeded to St. Peter's Primary School in Lamin under the tutelage of the late John P. Bojang. Uh, I grew up under that environment of scholarship, going to school, going to Dara behind the market in Lamin, where the new mosque is now, the new, the new central mosque. I also did the Karanta with an old man from Badibu called uh, Fajam. German teacher of blessed memory. Uh, we did what kids do there. We did the hunting, we did the kankurang, we went to Berato to swim, especially during Ramadan. Uh, there is another river off Wayeto called uh, Sitaba. Uh, we played football. We had a team called United Stars, uh, a, a three tire team where my elder brother, the late Ibrahim Asabali, played in Team A. I was in Team B, and my younger brothers, like Sherif Diba uh, and Bakari Maram, played in Team C. So we played with other teams in Yundum where we had people like Bora and Skanda playing and in Mandinaring where you had people like Lamin Sisa LC and uh, Shorty. Uh, we played against people in uh, uh, Banjulunding where we had people like Bobby and uh, 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 Alaji Fai and others. So this was my background as a child in Lamin. When I finished school in uh, primary school in 1987 because I had to skip uh, grade 5 thanks to the recommendation of the then headmaster uh, John P. Bojang. I have to uh, shout out my some of my teachers like C.D. Bojang, Mr. Bass, John Bass, uh, Kinta, uh, Miss Bajan. Yet he strived to stay in school even though he never had a complete set of textbooks. When he finished his O-levels in 1992 from St. Peter's Technical High School, his mother insisted that he must get a job so that she could enjoy the fruits of her labor. This was because among his mother's five children, he was the only one to have finished high school. I later went to St. Peter's Technical High School when uh, uh, Antres Ndongjata, Honorable, was the principal where I did a plethora of uh, subjects including physics, uh, mathematics, uh, applied electricity. Of course, Bible knowledge which was one of my favorite subjects. Uh, uh, we were being taught by Father David Jayu at the time. Uh, a beautiful environment where we grew up uh, learning 
playing football and basketball uh, alongside people like uh, Ibrahim Andong, uh, former interior minister, Emeba. We were together in a very beautiful environment where there was peaceful coexistence between religions and tribes. I grew up playing f soccer, I mean, and other games with uh, uh, Jola kids, with uh, Papil kids, with Manoj kids, with Balanta kids, with Mankind kids, literally. Uh, I can say the cultural heads at that time were Abba Malafi, Malafi Samate, who was a legend in terms of our circumcision rights, and the late Burama Baji, who was the chief circumciser at the time, the Ngaman, we called him. It was uh, an oasis of uh, uh, diversity uh, in harmony and peace. Mudu did all his early schooling in Lamin, located in what is now called Busumbala constituency. His nursery school was an old church in Lamin, San Chaba, from where he proceeded to St. Peter's Primary School, commonly known as Lamin School, then headed by the late John P. Bojan. When he finished at St. Peter's High School, he proceeded to Gambia High School for his A-levels. After two years of battling with physics and applied maths with a modicum of economics, Mudu finished at the top of his class, but there was a problem. It was difficult to get a job and there was no university in Banjul. I finished high school in 1992 and then went to Gambia High School where I did, I did my A-levels uh, in math, statistics and economics, where I finished off as the most outstanding student. A year later, the AFRPC government under the Lieutenant Yaya AJJ Jame opened the doors to university education in the Gambia. Mudu was among the first to be enrolled. In 1994, uh, I was to later enroll the university extension program in 1995 alongside uh, my, my colleagues at the time like Nani Juara, current MD of Naweki and Kubadabo, uh, current uh, uh, Commissioner General G are current environment minister uh, Lamin Diba, among others. In 1999, I graduated as valedictorian with a major in mathematics and a minor in economics. I also later worked at Central Bank as a research economist, and then later, and then move on to the Ministry of Finance around 2010 as national budget director. Within this framework, I was able to do professional training at institutions like Harvard University's uh, John F. Kennedy School of Government, where I did professional training in public finance management. The IMF Institute in uh, Washington, D.C., and the West African Institute for Financial and Economic M Management, YFM, Lagos, Nigeria. I had the opportunity to serve as a member of the ECOWAS Budget Ad Admin and Finance Committee. Uh, they call it CAF. He was to write the story of his education at Gambia's first university program in his trailblazing memoir, Jangi Jolof. With a degree in mathematics and a minor in economics, Mudu got a job at the Central Bank of the Gambia as a research economist, a job he held from 1999 to 2009 when the country's finance ministry requested his services to become the director of budget. By then, he had been shortlisted for a job at the UN headquarters in New York, but his patriotic zeal and the desire for practical knowledge and a sense of balance in his profession as a macroeconomist led him to settle for the budget job at the Ministry of Finance. He has undergone extensive professional training at the IMF Institute, the Central Bank of Switzerland, Central Bank of England's Centre for Central Banking Studies, the Kennedy School of Government and Harvard University, and holds a master degree in economics from Georgia State University in the USA. Alongside his official work, the boy also found a niche in motivational writing 
He has a deep feeling that the potential of African youths is grossly untapped and therefore writes motivational books and essays and also does speeches to inspire young people. I pursued a passion that was writing. I was, uh, alhamdulillah, I was able to publish a book called Jangi Jolof, a memoir on the Gambia's first university program, which I published in 2005, later developed it into a motion picture, a biopic. Uh, I did uh, Instant Success, 10 Keys to Personal Achievement and uh, The Way to Happiness, among other books, and later established the Sabali Leadership Academy. Perhaps one could say that the epitome so far of his writing career was his double book launched on March the 2nd, 2013, when he released For the Gambia, Living the National Anthem, and To the Gambia, The Smiling Coast, the former in prose and the latter in verse. It was on the eve of this double book launch that his fans named him The Gambia's Pen. Throughout his writing, he gets inspiration mainly from his mother who taught him the wisdom of the ages through Proverbs. His desire to make his mum proud is also a spur for his prolific writing. Perhaps it is his connection with this great woman, the late Aja Kadi Jame that also inspires his style of writing, which is laced with local proverbs. Has done. I am telling you, that's why I respect the particular part. And he has the know-how. By now, if Savali is in the system, by now the economy has been floated and the development started because he's a boy of smartness. Mudu was to be appointed Secretary General and Minister of Presidential Affairs in June 2013. A shock appointment that raised many eyebrows given his tender age of 39 to become the head of the country's civil service. The young man was unfazed. He dug in and pulled his mental plows. He was to be entrusted with even more portfolios, including Minister Responsible for the Civil Service and Secretary General of his country's ruling party in tandem with the other portfolios. Professor, who many of us looked up to, he is Honorable Professor Dr. Momoru Sabali, and indeed I should say I remember very vividly Socrates, a Greek philosopher, who once said to a young man, speak that I must see thee speak so that we might see you and so he has spoken the all-star sage and work of our time has spoken the pen of the gambia has spoken mr sabali is a humble man that many of us looked up to he is an epitome of sophronization he is a human dynamo he is a colossus a titan a agus and agus adonis admirable christian he is a plenipotentiary of a dawn icon and indeed, sir, I, Omar Kande Jr., am going to succumb to learn from your tutelage. And therefore, sir, you have got all what it takes to succumb sail to us to the promised land. And indeed, together, we can save our motherland, the Gambia, from a state of medicine, statism, and Kankaro tribalism and epileptic nepotism to a more sound national redemption. Undoubtedly, sir, you agree. His work accorded him the opportunity to meet and consult with world leaders, including the Egyptian President General Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, Russian Foreign Minister Suriji Lavrov. Uh, we have a very strong tourism industry. We, uh, we are well endowed with enormous fisheries, uh, resources and other hydrocarbons. And in our search for credible, credible and reliable partners, we believe that we could not have better strategic partners than Russia. South African firebrand politician Julius Melima, among others. After a year and a few weeks of service in his country's cabinet, Mudu was relieved of his appointment as Secretary General and Minister of Presidential Affairs, as well as all other portfolios he was holding. He was reassigned as Minister of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology. He was later fired and detained for several months amid a long winding trial 
All charges against him were later dropped by the state. While still going through this trial, he founded a youth mentorship organization called Sabali Leadership Academy, SL. The traditional three-day youth summer camp is organized by the Sabali Leadership Academy to enable young people participate in interactive sessions of ideas and experiences. Day two of the camping was devoted to the benefits of preserving nature. Upon arrival at the day two of Sabali's Leadership Academy Summer Youth Camp, we were welcomed by beaming faces of young inquisitive boys and girls ready to be inspired by invited intellectuals produced by the Gambia. Still sticking to their curriculum, spearheaded by motivational speaker Mr. Momodu Sabali, among his invitees was one of Gambia's most recommended historians, Mr. Hasum Sise, from the National Center of Arts and Culture. Well, the theme is uh, SLA Green Reemergence Camp. Green representing the environment because so we've now felt the urgent need to do something to educate and inspire young people on the need to protect our, our natural heritage. And re-emergence because um, we know the country has gone through a lot of late and uh, there is a need for, for institutions like the SLA to talk to young people and inspire them to, to rise above whatever happened in the past in terms of personal, social or community issues that happened that we are not very pleasant. To create and engender a new spirit of inspiration, hope, patriotism, and genuine, and I repeat, genuine concern for our environment. He was later appointed managing director and editor-in-chief of the Observer Company, publishers of his country's leading newspaper. And Mudu was later appointed director general of the Gambia Radio and Television Services in tandem with his role as Observer MD. As the Gambia prepared for the December 2016 presidential election, Mudu led his team of reporters from the state broadcaster to cover the first nomination that saw opposition leader Mama Kande formally present his candidature to the national election authorities. After broadcasting highlights of that event, Mudu was again picked up on the orders of state and thrown into jail with one of his reporters. Two weeks later, the charges that were dropped against him in his previous trial were brought up again by the state. He was to spend another two months in detention until a high court judge granted him bail in January 2017, bringing a close to his most recent ordeal. Still unfazed, still faithful and hopeful, Mudu went back to work on his life goals, doing private consulting as managing director of Penn's Den Consulting Limited. In addition to these roles, he continues to teach and inspire youths through his SLA programs. During his spells at the notorious Mile 2 prison, he would hold on to his holy scripture for guidance, inspiration and succor. From the surah of the glorious morning light, he would take heart with the verses, your guardian Lord has not forsaken you. Mudu is not a Christian, he is a Muslim, but he holds an open mind on religion and while he would read his holy Quran, he would also read the holy Bible that also gave him hope and inspiration while in prison. He repeatedly read and contemplated on Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an unexpected end. This is the wisdom about the Israelites when they were in captivity. And sure enough, Mudu never took his gaze off the radar that perpetually pointed to the promised land of freedom, hope, joy, and satisfaction. Like my grandmother would dutifully do, I end this story with the Mandinka saying, Talin Kongorong Dong Kos. I'm glad to have told you this story, my story, for truly, Maya Angelo is right. 
There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. I hope this inspires you to tell your own story, for each of you has his or her own story to tell. In conclusion, I bid you to sing with me the Psalms of David. I give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for he is mercy endureth forever. Psalms 136, 1.